Um, now we have uh, Leo Liu from Adobe Research. Uh, his first job uh, was to develop these visualizations as a research uh, undergrad research assistant in what uh, university? Uh, National University of Singapore. National University of Singapore. In which country is that? <laughs> <laughs> and um, well, not unlike uh, I think uh, a couple of our speakers now. Huh? He hopes that his uh, last job is going to be in data visualization. So, <laughs> and doing more uh, on uh, data analytics and human data interaction. So, uh, Leo? Thank you. Um, hi, uh, so I'm Leo from Adobe Research. I'll be presenting Data Illustrator, which is in collaboration with my intern, John Thompson from Georgia Tech, and also my collaborators from uh, Adobe and Georgia Tech. So data visualization is a very popular medium for storytelling and communication. As we have seen, there are many applications in data journalism, personal informatics, and also data art. So when it comes to the design and production of these visualizations, um, the designers have many tools at their disposal, but each has its own limitations. Um, business tools such as Tableau and Excel, they allow quick generation of charts, and they're relatively easy to learn and use. Um, but the charts are hard to customize. And then we have programming toolkits like D3 and processing, which is really powerful and expressive, but uh, it takes time to learn. Um, and also for many designers, programming is simply too hard. And finally, um, designers use um, tools such as Adobe Illustrator in their daily jobs. Um, although, but these tools don't really have uh, good data encoding support, which makes the authoring process tedious and error prone. Um, uh, but if you have enough time and patience, you can still create amazing designs. To address these limitations, we present Data Illustrator, which is a novel authoring tool which is based on uh, existing design tools uh, with automatic data encoding support. Um, no programming is needed. Um, so when we designed Data Illustrator, uh, we try to achieve power and expressivity similar to programming toolkits with improved learnability and usability. Uh, so to give a glimpse of um, how Data Illustrator works, I'm going to give a quick demo uh, by creating this particular um, triangle chart uh, designed by a column five media. On the left, we have the data. This data set is about the chances of getting funding for different types of resources, like books, supplies, and technologies in different subject areas. Um, and on the right, we have the visualization. Each um, triangle is colored by the type of resource. And then the height of the triangle represents the chance of getting funding uh, for that resource in that particular um, subject area. So for example, you can see it is much easier for, to get funding for all the resource types in math and science compared to special needs, for example. So now we're inside Data Illustrator. Um, we start by using the pen tool to create, um, to draw a triangle. And then with the triangle, we can repeat it by data. So we can first repeat it by the type of resource. Uh, there are four types of resources in this data set. So we can just use the grid handle to review all the copies and then um, change the distance between them interactively. Next, we take this collection and repeat it again by subject area so that we generate all the copies we need um, for all the data rows. And next, uh, we can do some data bindings. Um, um, we select the top anchor point, and then we bind its Y position to the chance of getting funding. And then we interactively change the axis, so zero aligns with the bottom of the triangles. And then we can apply more data binding by map the field color to the type of resources, which generates this uh, color legend, which we, later we can customize. Um, we can do additional touch-ups by, um, for example, changing the uh, width of the uh, stroke width to zero for the triangles, and then also uh, changing the opacity. And finally, all these legends are interactive, so you can just go there and uh, change the colors that you want mapped to each type of resources interactively. All right. So here is a, uh, so this is a quick demo. Um, so Data Illustrator is not really the first um, tool uh, we, uh, people have tried to design to support visualization creation without programming. Uh, for example, Lyra and Ivis Designer, they adopt a template-based or grammar-based approach for visualization authoring. And uh, Brad Victor's Drawing Tools and Data Driven Guides and also Data Inc., which was just presented by Natalie and Fanny, also uh, uh, share many similar ideas with our approach. Uh, we call this approach lazy data binding. The main idea is that you sketch or draw 
things first on the canvas, and then you, uh, you apply data binding whenever it's needed. Um, the main focus of our research um, is really on expressivity. Um, how do we take the lazy data binding approach and scale it to describe a wide variety of visualizations? Uh, in other words, uh, we want to identify a set of building blocks that can describe the structure and generation of diverse visualizations. Now, to answer this question, we um, uh, held weekly meetings with three designers over two years. Um, and then in the meetings, we ask the designers to create uh, some visualizations we have sampled from different sources um, using the tools of their choice so that we can get a better understanding of how they think about visualization creation and also uh, the tools they're using. And based on their um, demos and feedback, we created about 40 storyboards and mockups which would illustrate how an offering tool would work. Um, so when we are trying to find the building blocks, we follow three principles. The first one is that whenever we come up with a, an idea uh, that's borrowed from an existing design tools, it must be consistent with how it is used, uh, it is used in the current design applications. And secondly, these uh, building blocks should be interpretable by designers so that they can understand uh, how they work. And finally, these pieces, uh, these building blocks should be composable so that designers can piece them together in different ways and come up with novel designs. Right, so here is a quick um, a summary of the uh, main concepts in, the, in our framework. Uh, we have four, four high level categories, graphical primitives, uh, generative operators, structural descriptors, and data binding concepts. I will explain them in more detail and also demonstrate how they work in, in the interface. So like all the uh, uh, design drawing tools, um, all the shapes inside Data Illustrator are composed of anchor points joined by line or curve segments. And then we have two um, generative operators here. The first one is called repeat. Um, so here we are looking at a sample data set. Um, it's 2012 Olympic medals by country and also by medal type. So we can repeat a circle, for example, by any categorical data variable. So we can repeat, for example, by the country so that we generate uh, one circle for each country in the data set. All the rows that share the same uh, value for the country variable are attached to each uh, circle as its data scope. And we refer to the uh, generated uh, circles as a collection. Similarly, partition um, divides up a shape and then attach data to the uh, generated shapes. So here we can divide up a rectangle and uh, partition a rectangle by country. And similarly, we get all the rows um, sharing the same country value as each rectangle's data scope. And then we have a collection of rectangles. So with repeat and partition, we get collections of shapes which can be arranged in different layouts. Um, for example, a grid layout, a stack, a stack layout, a radio, or a packing layout. Um, so in, in our current implementation, we are supporting the first two, but we're uh, planning to add support for the, um, the other layout as well. Um, collections can, all, can also be nested. So for example, I can first repeat a rectangle by country, and then I can partition each um, rectangle by metal type. So this quickly gives us a structure which will be ideal for a stacked bar chart. Uh, similarly, um, if I, as you have seen in the demo, we can repeat a, a triangle by a type of resource, and then we can repeat the entire collection again by a diff different variable to create this complex structure. Um, and all the shapes generated by repeat or partition appears to each other. So if you manipulate any one of them, the changes are propagated to all the other shapes. So this applies to the size as well as the color. And lazy binding is achieved by selecting a shape on the canvas and then selecting a variable from the drop-down menu on the right. Um, data Illust Illustrator automatically creates the data encodings. So here we're binding data to the color and also the size of the shapes. And finally, all the scales and axes are interactive, so you can customize the data mapping and also um, the range in the uh, numerical scale. So here is a list of um, all the different kinds of data uh, visualizations we can create using Data Illustrator. All these examples are available online uh, in, in our online gallery. You can open them inside the app 
play with them and also watch them the uh, demo video to see how uh, to see the workflows. Um, so designers have also started using Data Illustrator to create things we haven't really thought about. Uh, so this particular designer from the from the Netherlands, uh, he created a variant of the uh, lollipop chart showing on the right. Um, so he tweeted about um, this tool and said, usually you would take him several hours to do this design in, in Illustrator, but using Data Illustrator, you will just take him a few minutes. Um, so as future work, we plan to add support for polar coordinates and also radio layout, and also add support for hierarchical network and geographic uh, data. And also designers have requested that um, um, it would be really nice if all these visualizations can be reused as templates um, so that th they don't have to scratch, uh, start from scratch. And um, finally, uh, adding support for animation and interaction is also something we're thinking about. Right. So, um, so here's the URL of the system. Um, uh, we encourage you to try it. And um, tomorrow at Kai, we're giving a longer talk uh, about this project with uh, longer and also more interesting demos. Thank you. Do we have questions for uh, you? Yes, we have one in the back here. Um, just curious, so when you want to um, like add new data, for example, so you kind of had to create each individual mark that's directly bound to uh, a point in data. So if you want to load like a new data set, would you have to then re-edit the initial file as well? Uh, do you mean uh, importing a data set on, a, on an existing design? Yeah, that is not supported right now. Uh, we're working on that. Cool. Yeah. Oh, I have a question. <laughs> if you want, uh, you work at Adobe. Do you want to tell us about the commercial future of that tool? Yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, I think it's our hope that this will become a real product. Uh, but uh, it's not totally clear whether this will be a standalone app or whether this will be some features added to exist, uh, Adobe's existing, uh, existing products. Uh, we're exploring both options right now. And I think one last question too. Yeah. Well, the, I saw a demo that came out, uh, I think over the summer for Project Lincoln. Yes. What's the relationship? Was that based on this or this based on that or independent teams? Or? Yeah. And so these two projects are related. So Lincoln was led by Bernard, who's one of the uh, co-authors on the paper too. So we're, we have collaborated a lot. Very good. So um, we are going to uh, go up. We are still on schedule or five minutes behind. Thank you so much, Leo. That was so interesting. Um, and yes.